Osiris's curse on the horizon. Millions of eyes glaring down what is supposed to be Destiny's great moment after the disappointing launch of Destiny 2. A post in LFG goes live, and an unexpected team of players claim worlds first on Destiny's first ever raid yes. layer. So, what does it take to win a raid belt in Destiny? Is it chemistry? Is it practice? Is it being the best of the best? Or is it simply being in the right place at the right time? These questions have been asked by every player crazy enough to attempt a world's first raid race. But one clan found the answer to these questions, plus more, and have found themselves on the summit of Destiny 2's raid racing scene. This clan has achieved many grand accomplishments and has become the first clan to three-peat in racing history. But it wasn't always that simple. In fact, their story started a long time ago, in a different era of raiding, and on the back of the most confusing time in the game. So, ladies and gentlemen, get comfy and grab a seat, because this is the story of Clan Elysium. Okay, stay alive, stay alive, let's go! Mid, get the chest! Let's go! Before there was this... No, we're not! Come on, come on. Keep going! We're good, we're good! Let's go! There was this... Now, this is a story for Destiny players that will sound all too familiar, as anyone and everyone had a bad LFG experience can attest, when it's not the right group, you want to form your own. Elysium started with 7 players, but arranging a time for 6 of those 7 to play at all times was a challenge, but they tried to push through it knowing it wasn't a great setup for their clan. Time passed and emotions were expressed leading to the hardest raid Bungie has ever made outside of Day 1 Last Wish, Spire of Stars. Spire may have been a hellish day for a lot of teams participating in the race, but for the early days of Elysium, it meant that only three of the six players came prepared to clear the raid on Day 1. The frustration of seeing everyone else compete on top of the frustration of the raid's difficulty led to a boiling point for two members of what Elysium would come to be. These frustrations from not even being able to run the raid encouraged two of the seven players, Widgey and Vandal, to branch out and start their own group. This began their search for like-minded players who wanted to be the best in the world. The plan may have been simple, but finding some of the best in the world does come with a lot of learning, and a lot of mature expectations. Widgie and Vandal wanted to establish early on that every single member in the clan would have a vote, and a voice in decision making for the whole clan. They would leave no one in the dark, and discuss with civility any issues or ideas they could learn from together. This would allow them to maintain almost complete accountability across the board when it came to clan related discussions and decisions. On top of that, they wanted to assert a philosophy where instead of looking to others to point blame, each person should look inward and self-reflect. To this day, these two principles are still what Elysium preaches, and are the core behind every change made within the clan. So in the beginning, the clan that would eventually become Elysium really started off as kind of a meme. There were just a couple of us and we decided that we just were done with the LFG and we were gonna make our own clan uh, and we initially called it my rally barricade it was kind of an inside joke we had this thing where whenever the bathers would come out of the pools in Leviathan we would just put rally barricades in front of them to just you know mess with them um, and we thought it was super funny uh, but yeah that's really how we got started much like this clan had been through the products of LFG their recruitment was also open through LFG 
They posted everywhere they could to try to find other players like them, and it came with some hurdles to say the very least. It was rough. It was exciting, it was new, but it really kind of put into perspective the, the, the disparity, almost in a way. The concept of people that want it and the people that don't want it as much, they're just kind of there. Last Wish. The wildest 24 hours in Destiny 2 with an almost 19 hour world's first clear and only two teams receiving the day one emblem, Redeem in Tier 1. It was an all out hell day and the early members of my rally barricade were yet again falling short on completions. Scourge was, it was a, a rough time. Scourge like really just kind of cemented it that there's there's just people in here that just don't want it as bad. Because um, the people that really want it, they're willing to put that effort in. They're willing to do whatever it takes. You know, they understand that to be the best, you have to have like enough humility to say, hey, I don't know how to do something. How do I do it? My Rally Barricade's Frenchie. Matster, The Last Meme, and Bormore managed to secure a 43rd spot in the Raid Report leaderboards. And honestly, they had a lot to be proud of. This was the first time running as a full clan, and although they were happy with the placement, there were some discussions that needed to happen. The whole point of the clan was to have a group of people that could be friends but could also be good at the game, right? And be competitive, and it's not easy to find people that are all on the same page, especially when you're trying to build a whole clan out of it. Following this race, My Rally Barricade lost Widgey, Loading, Bormore, and Fetish, more than half of their founding members, and the challenge of becoming one of the greats in the game came with a price, and a lot of conflict. Leading into the next raid day in Destiny, Crown of Sorrow, My Rally Barricade had a lot of additions. Some would stay to this day, like Matster, Cruz, The Rapier, and Mango, while plenty of others would depart. If you're unfamiliar with the story of Crown of Sorrow, this raid released the same day as the Season of Opulence in June of 2019. But it wasn't a Friday or a Saturday, it was a Tuesday. This meant that some players couldn't get off of work or school to raid race. And if you didn't watch my raid video about this one, it was hell to even enter the raid. We're talking almost seven hours of pure leveling on all three characters to get raid ready for Bungie's first ever contest raid. Especially after Crown, it was, you know, we were tired, right? And we were frustrated because we'd worked so hard and we hadn't gotten what we wanted. And it was admittedly because not everyone was maybe playing at quite the level that we all wanted for ourselves, right? There was a lot of disagreement as to what that should look like. Uh, and at the time, we just, we, we couldn't figure it out, you know? So I, we just ended up parting ways for a while, and it was, it was pretty sad. My Rally Barricade would lose a ton of members. The main proponents of keeping the clan in a more hardcore focus at the time left, while Frenchie, Rapier, and Last Meme ended up staying. It's sort of weird to think that the members who left the more hardcore side would eventually become the members that would form Elysium to what we know it today. Democracy was still in the best interest of everyone, and when the majority wanted the clan to be focused on casual friendly, the breakup completed. You sort of have to decide, right? What What is the end goal here, right? Are we just going to like be friends and hang out, or are we actually going to go for it, right? Really take the dive and and commit ourselves to going for this thing. Time had passed, but not enough to fully heal the wounds of the schism for Elysium. This is when the tides were starting to shift in the favor of them though, as Elysium added Quads, Vile Fate, and Saltagreppo to the roster. So while the emotions were still strong, Elysium's best team put together a finish of 17th in Garden of Salvation. The team of Quaz, Saltagreppo, Matster, Mystic, Dylan, and Keen Red Panda were the best sign of a foot forward for Elysium, and this was coming off of very little time to prepare for a raid race together. 
Hell, they barely even knew each other outside of a few weeks of play and adjusting to a whole new sandbox in Shadowkeep. This is when other members returned back to Elysium from the split, with Cruz, Slap, and Vandal all coming back to the clan, and this came with some reconciliation as to why they even left in the first place. The aftermath of the schism, the day one raid, and the return of these friends to Elysium was what they all recognized would be challenges and differences in opinions, but the common drive was something they all agreed upon to be the best they could be. This also marked a major paradigm change for Elysium, as they had come tantalizingly close to Worlds First for the very first time. So after the Goss Day 1 clear, this is kind of like the first major victory, I'd say, for the clan as a whole. I don't know, this is the first time that we could see ourselves actually becoming something more than just players who play the game and think that they're good. We could see ourselves as becoming people who are actually like contenders for the first place. This is when the members Bacon, Kairos, Dadbot, and Kento joined the clan. With that, Elysium's vision was coming to fruition, and the quick pursuit of players hungry to do something great was coming with it. When you're chasing your way to the top of the ladder, you can have some stumbles with recruitment. And without any belts to your name, hell, without even a top 10 finish in a raid race, it can be hard to get people behind that vision. But that didn't stop Elysium. While the systems that kept everyone accountable and made clan politics fair had been in place for a year and a half, Elysium did face some new challenges as new faces started to join the clan. We had done tryouts up until this point, but we could never agree on what was fair or what the best way to do them was. We wanted players that were at our level, sure, but we also wanted them to be a good personality fit, in line with what the clan had always been about. We also wanted strict filters because we were competing at a high level now, but we also recognized that we too had once been the so-called nobodies, and clearly we had the potential to be so much more. For many during the year of Shadowkeep, there wasn't much to keep players engaged. Sure, there were some things to do, but not in the way of proper recruitment of players, since people weren't engaging with the game in general. Especially in Season of the Worthy, noted as one of the worst seasons Destiny 2 has ever produced. This meant Elysium had time to iron out the process. By the time all the reformations were made in the recruitment process, there were multiple stones set in, including voting on personality, designated recruiters for skill testing, and a proper open line of communication with a recruiter. Another fun fact about Elysium is that the new admins are elected every season, as anyone in their clan can run for admin, but there's a scale of most preferred to least preferred where everyone is invited to vote. Uh, pretty much there is no long term admin um, unless it's what the clan wants. So very often we have new votes um, where any member in the clan can put their name up and decide if they want to be an admin or not or put step forward and put in the effort for it. And if the clan, you know, either wants change or um, somebody else thinks that they can help contribute further along, then everybody is welcome to. Leading into Beyond Light and its raid Deepstone Crypt, Elysium was feeling confident about a good placement. There was chemistry established, systems to root out problems, and a laser focus for their very first belt. If you remember or aren't familiar, DSC had one glaring issue going into day one, and that was... a lot of the raid was leaked on Reddit, YouTube, Twitter, and more. We're talking spreadsheets of information on encounters mapped out before we even got into the raid. With that being said, Elysium did their best to prepare for the raid as much as possible and got to work on day one. At this point, Elysium had expanded quite a bit, growing to the point where four teams represented the clan in Worlds First. Going, going. Hell yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> My good shit, boys. Huge. Good shit, boys. Down there, down there, down there. Nice. Yes. Good yes. Good yes. All right, good shot. Good shit, boys. Still darkness zone. Still darkness zone. 
Come on, come on, come on, come on. I'm out please, of fucking please, please, yes. 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 Oh, The oh team of Salt to Greppo, Quaz, Kairos, Matster, The Last Meme, and Stolshi came in second. Just under 13 minutes from winning. Going into DST for my team in particular, we were just hoping to finish in the top 20 again because we had some team making issues going into DSC and didn't get our actual team finalized until probably about a week before the raid came out. So we were again, we're like, we got 17th on Goss, just hoping to finish top 20 again. But as we were going and playing through, we realized that we were playing very well. We realized that the difficulty of contest had been toned down significantly with the introduction of resist mods. And we ended up just playing very well and ended up coming out with second place, which was really cool. We're now good enough to get this. We just need to play that extra bit better, give it that extra oomph. So looking back and going like this Atrax final stand hurt or this Tyanix final stand hurt and looking forward to the future and realizing that we might be able to win one. What a lot of people may not know about Clan Elysium is that although they came out swinging on the grand stage, they're also responsible for a lot of world's first low man clears too. I'm reloading. That's Let's go. Oh, Let's go boys. Good shit, boys. Good job, good, good job, shit. good job. Let's stay go. alive, stay alive. Let's fucking go. Talk. Let's fucking go! Good Holy good. shit, dude! Good fucking go. Oh my god! Hit Sick your shots, please. Please kill him. Please I'm kill him! Out. He's dead. He's dead. Don't wipe us, just don't wipe us. Just please, game, don't wipe us. Oh my stay god! Alive. Stay alive! Holy shit! Oh my god! Holy fucking shit! I always love this analogy of you're climbing a mountain and to climb it, you don't stare at the peak and take a step. You look in front of you and take a step, and then you take another, and you keep looking ahead, just forward. Not necessarily where you're gonna end, but where you are now. And sooner or later, you're gonna be at the peak that you could have been looking at the whole time, but you were focused on what was ahead of you. And accomplishing that step-by-step -step goal mentality, I think is a result of how we came to be and where we are today. When asked about Everest, climbers will describe that the hardest part of the climb is the Kumbu Icefall. Constant shifting of ice blocks creating crevices between climbers. So while the summit push may be hard, nothing is harder than constantly having to adjust to new circumstances. Grievances, differences of opinions, animosity, and tensions were all the splitting force of this ever-changing clan after coming so close to a world's first. Reaching for the stars is bound to have repercussions internally, and once again, a crack happened on the journey to the summit. The town hall, that's that's basically what it what it was. It was us basically sitting down and being 100% honest with each other and saying, look, here's my problem with this person, and they're in the VC and they can hear it, and we can all just go down the list. And ultimately, I, I think it worked out extremely well right I, I don't know maybe some people disagree but it was really awesome i would say and it really it was almost a bonding experience in my mind right where we could just sit down and finally just be honest with each other right none of this back talking and frustration and things that just sort of fester and grow but being competitive it it does take a toll right it is it is hard uh, but you also can't reach for the stars if you don't put in the effort i guess and get on the same page with the people that you're reaching for the stars with All of these mask off, ice shifting adjustments, and feeling of relief would lead into the next raid, as Elysium prepared for the first ever raid remaster, and with a raid race to adjust for. The rules were different, and it wasn't exactly a brand new raid, so Elysium got to work preparing for the first ever silver belt, one that would require two clears of the raid to boot the challenge of Vault of Glass. So after Dipstone Crypt, we did very well, we knew we could have actually got the word first and uh, since the race for Vault of Glass was a different one where it wasn't much about uh, discovering things or theory crafting, it was going to be more about executing or at least that's what we thought because we didn't suppose they were going to change too much. We actually changed up the team and we, me and Quads tried to assemble a team with the most, let's say, mechanically skilled players in the clan to try to have a better chance competing in a race that was gonna be mostly about execution and less about yeah, theory crafting and figuring out strats. 
The team consisted of a trio from the number two DSC, Quaz, Kairos, and Saltagreppo. Next up was a long-standing duo from the number 51 DSC, Cruz and Slap, and one final newcomer, Moople. This team was built as the best foot forward with a boom or bust mentality driving it. Leading into the raid, nerves were high, but confidence was even higher. So the night before the race, we all got together for one last talk about how we wanted to approach it. There we kind of sat down and theory crafted every single challenge for the raid, what challenges we had ideas for and how we wanted to approach them and what loadouts we were using. By the end of the night, at least, we had a pretty good idea of what we were going to do. This preparation resulted in Elysium being able to start the race without having to think too much. Left should be should be done in a sec. Okay, go, go, go. Okay, done, go done, done, done. Yep, yeah, I'll be spawned, get to the door. Breaking six, six dead. Seven dead. No, we're oh. done, we're done. Chest, okay. chest. Okay, we're done. Yep. Okay, 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 okay. Hey, swap, swap loaded, swap loaded. Oh yeah, he's so hey, low, he's so low. We got him, we got him. Thank you, good good I died, Let's but go. it's okay. Top, top, top wipe that. I think it's finished, nice, finish, finish. Space. Going into challenge mode gatekeeper, we were feeling pretty good about ourselves. Didn't know at the time how much of a lead we had, but we knew we had flown through challenge mode up to that point, and it only took us 37 minutes to get there. But every idea that we could possibly think of for gatekeeper just did not work, and we just ground to a screeching halt. It kind of felt like we were completely lost. It was definitely the most frustrating part of the race because we knew we were doing super well, we knew we were ahead, and then we just got stuck. Our lead, whatever it was at the time, was basically gone because we'd figured out the challenge for every other top team. Our very first attempt at Atheon challenge, we, you know, everybody got teleported in and we just had Slap get two oracles. And as soon as Slap killed two oracles, we wiped, so. On Elysium's very first attempt, the challenge was discovered and it was crystal clear what was needed. Doing the final calls for oracles, I was like shaking. I was like, we can't mess this up. Please don't mess this up. Like, this is literally our moment. Like, we've all dreamt of this. Like, we could literally do this. This thing that we've literally dreamt about and always like aspired to to do and to accomplish. Div down, div down, div down. Div down. It's fine, div down's fine. Just kill him 10 seconds. I feel like let's, let's, go, let's go! Let's go! We finally got it! Let's let's complete. Get chest and get the chest The final summit had been climbed for Elysium, and all of their hard work, all of the hurdles, the tension, and tenacity was paying off. After winning, there's just that elation of like, holy shit, we actually did it. Like we're more the best team in the world on that day for that raid. It is a crazy feeling. There's nothing like it in Destiny, just being able to be like, yeah, we actually made it to the top. We made it to the peak. It was gratifying to know that like, yeah, okay, I belong here now. Like it, it was a moment of, yeah, okay, maybe this is the place where I belong. We're, ra we're Raid World's first. We're the world's first team. Like, that's crazy. It's, it's incredibly surreal. It was funny because we had we had one, we had 21, and my team finished 41. So we were 20 spots in between us, all three teams. Elysium had finally accomplished what my rally barricade set out to do one day. And after the schism, the town hall, and the tension going into this raid remaster, Elysium was now at the top of the mountain and feeling the taste of victory. The high lived on through challenges in Vault of Glass, and now this team who had come so close in Deepstone Crypt had conquered that silver belt, wasn't content with complacency. Off in the distance was another summit to climb, however, and while Elysium held the title of World's First on a raid remaster, they wanted the next big one. This came with many recruitment enhancements. They didn't share the algorithm exactly for this process, but they did give a bit of insight into it. So it's come a long way. We up the, the tryout difficulty significantly. The tryout is very multi-stage. It takes a long time. There are several difficult like gameplay things you have to do, as well as a, um, a quote-unquote vibe check. The reason we want to keep us a secret, we want to make sure that people are coming in as surprised as possible to try to mimic like day ones as best as possible. Building a big roster of top players does come with a lot of personality clashes and, unfortunately, a lot of humbling. At the end of the day, we want to make sure that you're good enough to be in here. 
but we also need to make sure that there's going to be no clashing of personalities, make sure you're not an asshole, things like that. Putting that friendship aspect really high up there, I think, is one of the biggest differences, and it starts with our recruitment process. With all the increased traffic since the world's first belt, Elysium waited. They hosted tournaments and overall grew out their community, knowing not to get comfortable and to prepare for the next race. They say the toughest challenge for a winning team is to stay on top, and Elysium spent time in the season of The Lost working out any sort of bump there could have been. If you remember my Vow of the Disciple raid video, you may be familiar with how rough of a day one that was for many teams racing. There were connection errors, servers shutting down, emergency changes via Bungie to get the raid to function properly. Bungie would later reveal that they don't work on Saturdays, and that only a small skeleton crew was responsible for Val the Disciple. To say this day was a disaster in the eyes of a lot of racers is a big understatement. As endgame players, and especially raid racers, only get two days a year to show what they're all about. So you could say, Christmas was ruined. Probably side, yeah. one of the most like single, most frustrating experiences in gaming that I've ever had. After we flew in the first encounter and had to do it two, pretty much two and a half times, I, I wasn't really expecting to walk out of that raid with the belt. We want to get our back to back. We've been looking forward to a new raid for like 14 months now and you get in you kicked out 10 minutes in okay whatever that's fine shit happens but then we finish first encounter we're soft locked we finish it again we're soft locked we get to third encounter guitared weaseled i can't even remember what the hell the error code was but we're just getting kicked after kicked after kicked like just going in and being like okay this is bungie's like big event for competition of the whole year it's the new raid world's first this is it this is the day and the game is just completely unoperable it was one of the most frustrating things that I've ever been a part of. I was beyond pissed, and I don't think I've been that mad at games ever. If you compare, like, what we went through versus the next four placements, it's astonishing, the difference. We weren't supposed to be there, but we willed ourselves into getting that win. 19 disconnects, and we still come out on first. It was, it was pretty stacked against us. We really should not have gotten first. <laughs> like, I'm happy that we won getting a shit ton of error codes compared to winning because we don't get them against people that get them. So broken. That's it, that's it, that's it. Well, 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 Shoot, 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 G horn. Super. Reloading. Find the nice! Okay, get chest, get chest in orbit, chest in orbit, find the loop, find the loop. Slap. A player a part of two worlds first in a row was doing account recoveries, aka jumping on other players' accounts to get them a day one raid emblem. He was banned permanently, and Bungie clearly wanted to send him a message as they didn't give him his raid belt for completing a world's first raid. However you want to interpret this ban, good or bad, Slap was now unable to ever come back to his world's first team, which put Elysium in a very difficult position. Slap was not available for comment, but the challenge of the next great obstacle was in front of Elysium. It obviously sucks. Like, it, it sucks to lose a teammate. Like, you just have to kind of move forward. Vile Fate, another accomplished member of Elysium, stepped up to the challenge but he was going to have big shoes to fill after Slap's performance in Vow of the Disciple. If Elysium was going to make a big show again, Vile had to show up big time too. As part of our culture that we have in here, we have a lot of faith in each other's abilities. The world's first team needs a new six, and anyone, I believe, would have been able to come into the group, do their job, and fill the role, and be that next man up after you know they needed a sixth i, I kind of knew that i like my name would be brought up or considered as something going in is definitely the most stressed i've ever been for like a video game thing the race shot off like a cannon but elysium they weren't themselves it was the day one with the most pressure by far for me because you all, you probably only got the occasion of winning three times in a row once. We tried to take the same steps that we did before VOG came out, where we sat and thought about challenges. For this particular raid, having two hunters wasn't that bad either. 2-2-2 two, two, two was going to be fine for King's Fall. We did not play well at all on Totems and Warpriest. Like, I was actually 
I'm actually disappointed of our performance in those two encounters because we could have done so much better. We literally wasted probably almost 20 minutes. Dumb deaths or just like bad communication or just random things that were going wrong that looking back on is really bad for us as a team that like prides themselves on being able to execute. Like we yeah. genuinely were just playing very bad, like straight up. The previous winning team had a massive problem at hand. Kairos's PC was struggling through the raid. 10 seconds on the timer, Cruz. Yep. Need to need to turn him on. I might be dead. Seven With seconds. the previous raid having a 3 minute and 15 second win over math class, time is everything in World's First Racing. Thankfully, this is a raid remaster. So although Elysium finished 12th on the normal contest clear, they still had challenge to make up all of that lost time. In fact, Elysium would climb through the ranks and make up all of that time and conquer Totem's challenge to climb yeah, back. Yeah, so we're, done. Okay, we're, we're done, we're done, we're done. Good job, good job, stasis, we killed stasis. that. Warpriest, they were just behind the pack as well. Nice! nice. Let's go! Let's go! Let's go. Okay. And then, they took the whole lead after so Gold Rock. Keep damaging, keep damaging. Nice. 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 Keep it up, keep it up, keep it up! I'm Boys, we got two more. The real challenge here was against another competitive clan named Intrinsic, who had been very close to claiming victory in Vault of Glass's remaster and were neck and neck with Elysium. As funny as that is, no one actually knew what the challenge was for sisters. People have been saying on Twitter, don't step on the same plate, people making guides about that, and the challenge was not that. The challenge was to not step off a plate after you stepped on, which was gonna do that. Getting to Oryx, and we were like, oh, nobody's there. And then, you know, when we're there, we learn about a team that's at the exact same point. Obviously, we didn't 100% know what the challenge. We knew the ogres for sure. We didn't know about the knights. We were trying to take precautions. After the final bomb detonated, I was like, I saw his health. I had so much ammo. I knew he was going to die. This is it. Kick it up a notch. Step up. We're going to get another one's first. My host, my host. Yes, Cruz is host. Wait, the moment that we get, we got loot, we got loot. Please let this be the fucking back. Come on, man. They wiped. They wiped. Oh my god. Let's go. It looks like you guys. It looks like it. Seeing you guys win and then like seeing, you know, Ward's team do so well and like Bacon's team obviously did really well. All of us did so well on that day. So it was just such a like a, a nice positive experience. Elysium will go where we take it, you know? We get tighter and tighter as a group of friends, and no matter where we go, we're always gonna have our friendship, we're always gonna celebrate each other's achievements, no matter what they are. These are people I could just be best friends with if Destiny didn't exist. You know, each day one we've had our own little troubles per se, with Gatekeeper Challenge holding us up, the Rolk Erica situation, and not giving up. And, you know, King's Fall is really no different, while well, just not starting off the way we wanted to. So each each time we've had something we've that we've really had to persevere through and overcome. I wonder what the next one's gonna be. History has been made, and Elysium's favorite belt might just be the next one. From a clan that started with a high amount of emotion and conflict to a powerhouse of next man up mentality, Elysium is the second dynasty in Destiny rating but no doubt the first ever three-peat winners. Thank you for watching. Follow all the members of Elysium as their links are in the description. Special thanks to all the members for sharing their story. And until the next video, be sure to like and subscribe. I'll see you next time.